Of all the American vice presidents, none is more vilified than John C. Calhoun. Calhoun is known as the defender of slavery, the cast iron man, the man who started the Civil War. His monument in Charleston has been vandalized, his name removed from Calhoun College at Yale, his alma mater, and now his home, Clemson University, is debating whether to drop his name from the Honors College. Why? Americans don't understand John C. Calhoun. It wasn't so long ago that John F. Kennedy called Calhoun one of the greatest senators in American history. Calhoun's primary adversary in the Senate, Daniel Webster of Massachusetts, labeled Calhoun a senator of Rome when Rome survived, while Henry Clay of Kentucky said Calhoun was the brightest star in the House of Representatives. Calhoun held almost every prominent position in the general government except the presidency, Secretary of War, Secretary of State, Vice President, Senator, Representative, such a man will receive the highest accolades in modern American government. Not so with Calhoun. He was also the last great American statesman. A statesman must be something of a prophet, one who has an historical perspective and says what he believes to be true and in the best long-range interests of the people, whether or not it is popular. A politician, in contrast, which is all we have now, says and does whatever he thinks will get or keep him in power and his historical perspective is limited to the next opinion poll or brown bag full of unmarked bills. Calhoun's mind and his devotion to the American experiment were equal to that of the great men of the founding generation. He had an advantage over the founders in that he had 40 years of experience near the top of the federal government, and thus a view of how things had worked under the Constitution. He was the most original political thinker in American history. People from all over the world study Calhoun's disquisition on government, for advice on how to restrain government power. Calhoun never lost sight of the American Republican tradition. Calhoun wrote, but government, although intended to protect and preserve society, has itself a strong tendency to disorder and abuse of its powers. No modern American conservative would argue otherwise, but because of Calhoun's defense of slavery in the 1830s, he is no longer recognized as one of the great leaders of the United States. This is unfortunate, for Calhoun's defense of slavery was hardly original or even unique. New Englanders, as early as 1701, used the exact same language as Calhoun in his now infamous positive good speech when they defended slavery from abolitionist attacks. But the historical profession ignores this readily available information, either by choice or more likely ignorance. Calhoun presents a problem for modern American society, which is the primary reason he must be marginalized, contextualized, or erased from public memory. In our society of mediocrity, such a deep and perceptive thinker as Calhoun cannot be celebrated. He must be banished, lest he makes everyone else look bad. And a man so critical of centralized power is certainly out of step with modern American views. Take, for example, what Calhoun had to say about the Congress, the presidency, and the general government. The constitutional power of the president, he said, never was or could be formidable unless it was accompanied by a Congress which was prepared to corrupt the Constitution. Congress has been doing just that since 1789. In a statement that would be shocking to modern political pundits, Calhoun suggested that the presidential election is no longer a struggle for great principles, but only a great struggle as to who shall have the spoils of office. And in a stinging indictment of political parties, Calhoun argued that the federal government is no longer under the control of the people, but of a combination of active politicians who are banded together under the name of Democrats or Whigs and whose exclusive object is to obtain the control of the honors and emoluments of the government. They have the control of almost the entire press of the country and constitute a vast majority of Congress. With them, a regard for principle or this or that line of policy is a mere pretext. They are perfectly indifferent to either, and their whole effort is to make up on both sides such issues as they may think for the time to be the most popular, regardless of truth or consequences. Replace Republican for Whig and not much has changed. These are words all Americans can understand and relate. Calhoun always insisted he was a union man, so long as the union continued to protect the liberties of the people of the United States. With the current crop of politicians in Washington spending trillions on unnecessary domestic and foreign policy goals, with corruption rampant in all three branches of government, and with federal policy consistently at odds with the life, liberty, and property of the American people, isn't Calhoun more prophetic than ever? Admitting that, though, would require a level of honesty virtually no one in the modern academy possesses. Tearing down Calhoun is nothing short 
of tearing down America.